Letitia Forster. I'm with the Human Resources Office, and I'm going to show you, or kind of give you some tips on resume writing and interviewing skills. Um, and then we're also going to do a little role play, too. So we're going to have fun with this. Please ask me any questions that you have as we go through or wait till the end. But as, you know, as we go along, a lot of information is going to be thrown at you. So again, stop me and ask the questions as they come up, or again, wait until the end. Okay, let's get started. Getting started. How do you start? Um, how do you start the process? Because there's no formal way to do that. Okay, we're going to talk about the different types of resumes. Okay, then we're going to talk about basic and essential information. Again, you might not think it's important, but believe me, it is. Okay, we're going to give you some highlights on what to look for, or what to actually put in, and then review. We're going to show you content. What should you actually put into it? What should be the meat? Okay, then additional important information, and just kind of sidebar information. What not to do? Okay, those are very very critical. And little tips, little side stuff we can probably help you with. Delivery. How do you get the resume to the employer? Okay, that's again another critical situation. We'll do a role play if we have some time. We're going to prepare for an interview. Okay, interviewing tips, the actual process itself while you're there. Okay, whether it's electronic or face to face. Okay, and of course I'll open up any questions you may have at that time. All right, let's get going. Getting started. Create a format that is easy to read. Okay. Standard font is Arial. You can use Times New Roman. You can use uh, just your basic font. Don't make it like old English or anything like that, or it's challenging for the employer to read or strain or don't make it challenging. Make it simple, quick, and easy. Okay? No colors. Don't put colors on the resume because if it comes through and you have to fax it, those colors might actually block out the information that's on the resume, which would be a little challenging. Okay? We want to catch the reader's attention. Okay? Hmm, that looks interesting. Let me read further. Okay, that's what you want. Okay? Your purpose is to obtain an interview. That's your goal. You want them to call you. Okay? This is the first meeting between you and the employer, okay? One to two pages should be enough. Don't send a book. They're not going to read it, okay? You want basically summary. This is the information. These are my qualifications. This is what I want, okay? That's what you want to focus on, okay? Any questions so far? All right. Let's talk about different types of resumes, okay? Chronological. That's the most common. Your time frame, breaking it out. Present information. Then prior to that, prior to that, and just keep going, okay? Or you can create one that's functional. These are my skills. These are my accomplishments, my education, okay? You can do that too. Or you can do both, okay? You can create, do the skills, and then within that, you can show the time frame of when you obtain those skills whether they're current or something you obtained five, ten years ago, okay? So there's those three types. Basic information. Your name. Wow, how simple is that, right? Your address. Your telephone number with the area code. That is so important. Put the area code. Okay. And put the phone number that you want them to call you at. Not a number that you're going to have to leave on voicemail. Okay, Whether it's a cell phone, a home phone. Today, a lot of people don't have landlines. They focus on cell phones. So always make sure you put the area code. Your education. Okay. Do you have, what kind of degrees do you have? What kind of certifications do you have? Very, very critical. Very critical. Your skills. What can I do? Okay. I can install electrical wiring. I can teach. I was a teaching assistant. I can do that. I have that skill and I have that certification. Okay. And the dates. When did you obtain those? 
Are you doing it now? Okay? So your dates are very, very important. But again, they're basic. Okay? Target applicable credentials for desired position. When you want to first introduce it, you want to focus on that position that you're applying for. Okay? You don't want to say, um, I want a job working as a plumber, and you're applying for a store manager position at Dollar General. Kind of conflicting. Okay, so focus on that position that you're applying for. Okay, so that it catches the reader's attention. Okay? Your content. This is, again, your meat. Okay? Your chronological. chronological. Where have you been? How long have you been there? Through dates. Okay? And not necessarily by the specific day, but the month and year. Okay, if you can at least get the year, that's fine, but if you can get the month in there, that helps the reader know if there's any gaps within that year. Okay. If applicable, define office closed or laid off. That is critical today. So many businesses, unfortunately, are closing. So you want to tell the employer that you're applying to that I left there because I was laid off, and there's there's a gap in there. There's a gap, okay? Because it took, could take you a while to find other employment, okay? Reinforce it with accomplishments. What are you capable of doing? I can install wiring. 50 feet in the air, okay? I can I can build a home. Wow. Try to focus on what you did, but what you can do now, your current skills. I can build a home, okay? Not, well, I used to be able to. Well, no, that's not gonna help you. That's not gonna help you. You want them to know what you can do at this moment, okay? Their official recognitions. Licenses. Oops. Okay. Hold on. Professional license. Do you have a license to install wiring? Are you a certified plumber? Okay. Publication. Have you published a, in, in a journal? Do you have any patents that are out there? Those are huge like, things today that could separate you from the other applicants, okay? Your professional affiliations, okay? Are you a member of the Plumbers Association? Are you a member of the, the uh, American Society for Training and Development, okay? You're, that means that you're current with the information plus the associations are there, the relationships with the external and other professionals are there, okay? Moving right along. What not to do? Place your picture on your resume. Gives you an instant judgment of the applicant. Okay? And today, with so many lawsuits for employment law, discrimination and bias is so rampant in the United States. Okay? Critical, critical, critical that you don't put your picture on your resume. Because if me as the employer is looking at the name, I could say, Jean, that's the name of the applicant. That could be male or female. And more and more names today are being used for either gender. Okay? So Jean could be a male, could be a female. I don't know. I don't need to know. It doesn't matter unless it applies to the job. Okay? If there's a picture of Jean on that resume, I'm going to know whether or not she's male or female. I'm going to know her ethnicity. I might know her religion if it applies to her ethnicity. And I might know where she's from that does not apply to the job. Okay, it's very, very critical, very important. Define your marital status. You don't need to tell the employer if you're married or if you have kids. It's none of their business during the interview process, okay? It does not apply to the position, okay? If you do that, you're, again, opening up the chance for bias, okay? Because if I have an employer go, oh, gosh, she's got three young kids, 
That means she's going to call out a lot. She's definitely going to want holidays off, and she can't work at night. Nope, don't want her. But she could be the most qualified candidate for the position, okay, according to her education and experience. So by putting on there that, yes, have three kids, young, you know, four, six, and two, you're creating bias. Okay, and again, also religious affiliation. Unless, during the interview process, a question comes up that says, are you willing to work weekends and evenings because it pertains to the job and your religion does not allow you to work on a Saturday or a Sunday? That is critical, okay? That is to be communicated up front during the interview, not on the resume, okay? Because again, you don't want to create bias. Okay. Put the word resume. You don't put the resume at the top. We all know what it is. You know what it is. Don't worry about that. Just leave it on. Put your name and your basic information on top. Okay. Have typogra typographical or grammatical errors. I have seen more people misspell Central Virginia Community College that I have ever seen in my previous employment. They, these applicants don't even spell the name of their employer correctly that they're applying to. That's a challenge. It creates a wall in my perspective because, I'm sorry, but you didn't take the time to figure out how to spell Central Virginia Community College, or if you knew how to spell it, you did it incorrectly, but you didn't go back and check it, okay? That's a no-no. That's a no-no. Okay? Your availability, unless, unless it does ask on the application, okay? I'm available on these dates, these days, and these times. You can do that, but don't put it on a resume. It doesn't belong on a resume, okay? Your salary desire, again, it could be on the application, but not on the resume itself. Okay, because the resume is about you, okay? Graphs and your charts, that's a little much, okay? Now, if you, if the position requires you submitting a portfolio, then that's when your graphs, your charts, your presentations, all that would come into play, not on the resume itself, okay? Your weaknesses. I work too fast. Now, why would you put that on your resume? You wouldn't. Um, I'm sometimes I'm a dumb blonde. Oh my goodness gracious! Please don't put that on your resume. I don't want to see that. Tips: Proofread more than once, or have someone else proofread it. You proofread it and give it to somebody else to look at. There's nothing wrong with that. I proofread a lot of resumes. Be conservative. Yes. You're trying to sell yourself, but don't continuously pat yourself on the back on your resume. And again, this is basically a summary. Okay, this isn't, I did this, this, and this, and this, and this, and um, I'm, I'm about to do this and all this, but be conservative. Summarize, summarize. Hopefully you'll have your chance in the interview to be more specific, okay? Truthful, always be truthful. If not, it will come back to bite you in the butt. I promise you. I promise you. I've actually read off a resume to someone once. And she says, well, I don't know how that got on there because that's not true. And I looked at her and I went, oh, okay. Have a nice day. <laughs> I mean, why would you not tell the truth on your resume? Especially because you know if you are called in for an interview, you're going to be asked to expand on your resume. That's the process. Okay? Be concise. Be specific. Okay? Your delivery. How are you going to deliver it? Most resumes today are sent electronically, whether they're sent to an HR mailbox, which is what's done here, or you can do an attachment, you can download to an employer's website, which is very, very common today. You'll actually pull in your resume to their link and it actually populates your application for you. 
Very, very convenient. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Use your full name. Okay. Not your nickname. Don't put your nickname in there. Okay. But they call me Bubba. Well, that's fine. But we're not going to do that. Not at this stage in the game. Okay. Your telephone number and your email and on all pages of the resume, just in case they get separated. Okay? Because if you're sending me a four-page document by electronic, I'm going to print it, and believe me, with all papers on my desk, they could get separated. It's happened. But I know that that person's name, I know to put that with the, with the other resume, with the other pages, because it's referenced back to that first page. Okay? A fax. You can fax it. However, fax machines are going away. They're slowly going away. Okay. Most places today will say, send it to me either a PDF or a Word document, electronic. Okay. So yes, you can fax, but again, there are challenges with faxing because of um, problems with the machine. It could get caught. Okay. It could rip. Okay. So be careful with that. Hand deliver or the mail. Okay, if you're going to hand deliver it or mail it, give it uh, to make sure it's an unfolded, clean copy. Okay, not one that your dog ate the quarters off of. Okay, so don't do that. Okay. Make sure it hasn't been through the ringer. And again, that goes back to the preference of electronic. Okay.
Should not be done. I mean, the applicant didn't care. She was uh, annoyed that it didn't last that long. She was annoyed that she was asked that she had to read off her, her resume. Okay. Um, obviously, she was trying to chew gum. Um, she answered the cell, her cell phone. Okay, which again is a no no. Um, when she walked in, though, she did shake the employer's hand. Nonchalantly, but she did. So she started off okay, but it went downhill from there. Okay. Um, she was basically tired and she showed it. Okay. She certainly didn't give good eye contact. Okay. She rolled her eyes. Okay. Um, she didn't sit still. Okay. Again, very, very unprofessional. Very unprofessional. Um, the employer made it very clear the different stages, so that was very, very effective. Okay, she did say what the next step would be. Okay, which is very effective. Um, but again, the applicant was annoyed and very, very unprofessional. Okay, um, and a big factor in interviewing is eye contact and your body language. Okay, body language says so says so much more than what comes out of your mouth. Definitely, definitely. Okay? All right. Preparing for an interview. Have knowledge of the organization. Do your research. Learn about the company. Seem very, very interested. Okay? Develop questions from that research. Okay? Because again, it's going to help you communicate with your employer and show that you are interested and you want to be a part of that team. Okay? Look better, feel better. Think of an interview as a first date. Everybody gets excited on the first date. They want to look the best and act the best, and they, they just they're on that cloud ten and a half. Okay. Well, that's how you should feel in an interview. Even though yes, you're going to be nervous. Okay. But think of it as the excitement. Okay. You're, you're, you want to give that first impression that is just wonderful and awesome. And you can't take back once you've already had it. Okay. So remember that. Prepare your questions. Arrive five to ten minutes prior to the interview. Never be late or too early. Okay. If you're too early, sit on the parking lot. Don't come in there 45 minutes early. Okay. Just sit out in your car or wherever you're at. Okay. But don't never, never, never be late. Okay. I've been surprised um, in my career to see how many applicants arrive after the scheduled interview. Again, it does not set very well, especially if, like in our case, we have an interview panel. So you're not just affecting HR, you're also affecting others who have rearranged their schedules to attend that interview. Be prepared to be an active listener. And again, it's okay to, to be nervous. That's being human, okay? Know what you offer. You want them to want you, okay? Very, very critical. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. Interviewing tips. Make eye contact. That is so, so critical. Again, it shows that you're interested in what the other person is saying. Okay? Because you want them. Again, you want them to want you. Okay? And it's all about body language. Listen to the question and stay focused. If you, you know, and again, I know it's hard because you're going to be nervous. But listen to the question. Okay? And ask them to repeat it if you didn't hear it correctly or you want them to repeat it. There's no issues at all with that. Okay? You can ask them to repeat it. Be positive and smile. Speak clearly. Again, display your confidence. Show that I know what I'm talking about, but just to a certain level. Okay? Always be gracious. Say thank you when the interview concludes. Always thank them. Thank them for their time. Okay? Let's review. Getting started. First meeting. Okay, you get the first meeting. Three types of resumes. Basic information your name, your address, your email address, phone number with area code, your highlights, your content, which includes accomplishments. Okay? Your recognitions, any certifications that apply to the position. Very, very what not to do? 
put your picture in. Okay? The number of children you have, your marital status, your religious affiliation. Okay? Be truthful. Always be truthful. Delivery methods, electronic, fax, okay? Uh, again, a lot of employers today will allow you to download your resume and it populates the application. It's so, so convenient. Do your research. Do your research. Okay? And again, with, during the interview, eye contact, your body language. I might, whatever I say, and that's, you know, might be effective, but if my, my body language is saying something different, it could ruin the whole conversation. Okay? So, very, again, you want them to want you. Okay? Any questions? 